The Volkswagen Amio should arrive to the compact sedan party, maybe carrying a CD full of old school music and maybe a bottle of desert liqueur because that is how late it is to the party where the others have probably already passed out or getting ready for the next day. That's precisely why the only party goers we have left here are the Desire, which wears such an important badge that it will be accepted no matter how it arrives at work. And we also have the Figo Aspire, which has plenty of party tricks to show off. We know because the last time we compared these cars, the diesel Figo Aspire came out victorious. Let's now see how the Amio or the latecomer fits in. The Polo is already 3.95 meters in length, which left hardly 5 centimeters for Volkswagen to play around with to create the India friendly sub 4 meter sedan. So, to gain some extra space at the rear, they shaved off 3.5 centimeters at the front. The result is pretty impressive. I can't imagine I use the words pretty and impressive to describe a car from this form factor. For they all look like a compromise. The hatchback derived front end gives these cars a stubby nose and largely contributes to making them look imbalanced. But the Amio does manage to look quite proportionate for what it is, thanks largely to the long and sharp nose, the balanced overhangs and the gradual slope for the roofline and the rear windshield which neatly flows into the stubby boot. The new tailgate draws inspiration from Škoda's design book with the slash lines on the boot lid and a kink in the outline of the tail lights. These elements also help in reducing the visual bulk of the new boot. The Amio looks quite lean with its chisel lines and aims at taking attention away from the fact that this is one of the smallest cars in its segment. Comparing overall designs though, the Amio looks the most elegant thanks to its simple European styling and paint quality that appears to be superior than its rivals. The Desire isn't a pretty car. In fact, it looks the most disproportionate in this segment but gets away with the badge on the grille. It was recently given a facelift though to break the monotony created by the shiploads of Desires that hit the roads every month. The Aspire in comparison is closer to the classic 3-box design that you expect on a sedan. Its stubby and flat nose doesn't seem to have appealed to many but it still has the most stylish rear ends of this lot. Moving to the cabins, the Amio's cabin is virtually unchanged from the Polo and that has its pros and cons. The downsides are lack of enough room at the rear and very simple styling for the dashboard fascia. But if a boxy treatment is your thing, then you will like the clean layout of this cabin. The positives include the sporty flat bottom steering wheel, the new touchscreen infotainment system and seats with adjustable headrests. The Zest is the only other car in this segment to get a touchscreen infotainment system but the Amio's unit easily outclasses it with an easy to use interface. The Amio's front seats are generously sized, get a centre armrest with storage space and are nicely bolstered even for long distance journeys. Finding an ergonomic driving position is easy and the tilt and telescopically adjustable steering contributes to that effect. The rear seat has decent angle of seating but knee room, leg room and under thigh support are just about adequate. The Aspire is the most spacious cabin of this test but its lower seating doesn't give it as good an ingress and egress as some of its rivals. The seats are relatively firm and very comfortable for long distance journeys. But in this test, its cabin feels the most pleasant though with its well appointed elements and a more premium finish for all its components. It also happens to have the most storage spaces in this class. The Desire's cabin has a clean layout and is the most ergonomic of the lot. Like the Amio, the space is only good enough for a nuclear family. Despite the recent update with just about added Bluetooth telephony and a push button starter, the infotainment and the features list is pretty basic. Maruti Suzuki does offer quite a fat list of dealer level fitments but as far as factory fitment is concerned, the game has clearly moved on and the desire just doesn't match up. It also has the smallest boot of this test at 320 litres. Let's now talk about how they drive. The weakest link for the Amio has to be its engine. It's a 1.2 litre petrol engine and that's the only option you have for now. And we've had complaints with this mill in the past, not in terms of its reliability, but in the way it performs. The engine emits its unpleasant three cylinder thrum throughout the rev range and it also happens to be the least powerful engine in its class. 
The weakness was highlighted on the mountain roads that we drove on as the engine demanded too many shifts and even then the performance wasn't too impressive. The Amyo took 16.9 seconds to 100 km an hour, making it the most lethargic to the ton. Around the city though, there is enough low-end push to amble around without losing your cool. On the highway, the engine can cruise at triple digit speeds without feeling too strained, but pulling overtakes or scaling inclines may need a downshift or two. You only get a 5-speed manual option for now with the Amyo, whereas the rest of its rivals, say for the Zest, also come with the option of an automatic. As far as the Amyo goes, uh, the gear shifts are a tad rubbery, the clutch is slightly on the heavier side and its springy nature can get cumbersome for city use. The steering is precise and perfect around twisties, but slightly heavier for city use again. The suspension is set up to a relatively softer setup that works well on our roads and immediately gives you the taut feel of a typical German car. Around bends though, there is a bit of body roll at turn-in, but no unnerving rebound. It is easily the best handler of this lot, but the engine doesn't support the cause. Can't wait for the talky 1.5-litre diesel then, which arrives this Diwali. The Ford Figo Aspire has a nice balance between handling and ride comfort too. The ride is quite supple and compared to its diesel variant, the petrol-powered Aspire has a tad bit more body roll. The car holds its line very well when pushed around bends. But the engine plays spoil spot as the revs take ages to climb up. The engine is tuned for better top end and the Aspire can happily reach speeds of over 170 km an hour, but it suffers from a weak mid-range grunt and demands frequent gear shifts in the urban environment. Since the engine needs to work hard to get things done, this car is the least fuel efficient of this test, though not by much. Swift Desire with its rev-happy 1.2-litre K-series mill offers a pleasurable driving experience. The engine, however, tends to get a little noisy as the revs climb. Mid-range is quite decent, low-end is a little laggy. That said, it has the lightest clutch of this lot, making it an easy driver within the city. The steering feedback is quite nice too and the steering weight is ideal for both city and highway use. It seems to have more body roll through corners than its hatchback sibling, but that too isn't unnerving. Ride quality is slightly on the harsher side, especially for the range-topping trims which get alloy wheels and the wider and lower-profile tyres. The lower-spec trims which uh, get steel rims and fatter rubber, fatter in terms of profile, they do a better job at bump absorption. The suspension, however, is noisy across the range. Noise insulation on all these cars is on par with each other. All of them also have a decent ground clearance of over 160 mm, which is quite adequate for what these cars are set out to do. But if you need to tackle some really bad roads, then the Aspire's class leading ground clearance of 174 mm could suit you best. Let's sum it up then. Well, the Amio fits into this class really well and Volkswagen has kept its promise of delivering the most premium offering in this compact sedan space by filling up the Amio to the brim with features, standard equipment and also build quality that is hard to falter despite those cost-saving measures. Now, the engine is a letdown but if your compact sedan is only expected to ferry you from point A to point B, in that case, the Amio offers tremendous value. The only elephant in the room is the Volkswagen cost of ownership and the dreaded after-sales service. But if you have a trusty VW dealership around you, well, nothing should stop you from putting down money on this value offering. But if I had to pick out a clear winner, it has to be the Ford Figo Aspire. It has higher level of safety, more drivetrain options, has a very well-appointed cabin and also manages to achieve a very good balance between ride quality and driving dynamics. It also benefits from Ford's ever-improving service network. The only thing that goes against it is resale value. And if resale value is so important to you, then like most other buyers in this segment, you may not want to look beyond the Swift Desire anyway, no matter how better the competition has gotten so far.